This is the Bulls 650E2 Street electric street bike. Um, it's been modified a little bit. I think it's available in Europe, and the American version here is a speed pedelec. So you're getting something that can take you to work a little bit faster, or maybe you're running errands. It does have this awesome little pannier rack back here. Um, and of course the fenders and lights, integrated lights. We got a supernova back here, just three LEDs, but they do brighten when you activate the brake levers, which is pretty awesome. And then we've got a, a Fushan LED light up here. Again, you know, a little bit more basic than the, the super high end. Um, They've kind of got like the daily grinder with drop bars and stuff, also a speed pedelec, but it's $6,000. This one is $4,099. And Bulls just has a whole bunch of these speed pedelecs coming out that um, to me is, is really cool. I like to go a little bit faster. I'm actually kind of in the hills here in California and you can coast down these. I was coasting at like 42 miles per hour. Again, the motor wasn't getting me up that fast. It was just, you can ride a bike that fast. And so why not be able to once you're on the flats, go a little bit faster, um, hit that 28 mile per hour and, and shorten your commute, and then still be able to carry stuff, potentially even replace your car for what I consider to be a pretty good price, especially considering the drive system that's on this. So this is the Bosch Performance Speed Motor, 350 watt nominal output, 60 newton meters of torque, a little bit lower than their CX motors that put out like 75 or something, but you don't necessarily need the torque. And really it's kind of the same hardware, just the software is a little bit different from, from my understanding. Um, and then of course the battery pack, we've had the Bosch Power Pack 400 for a while, and that's actually the pack that's on this sample unit, but this is going to have the uh, 500 watt battery, 36 volts, 13.4 amp hours. Um, so pretty, pretty stellar. Uh, battery performance you should be able to get good range and that's the trade-off from of this versus the outlaw uh, e45 okay that's their other you know semi-affordable higher-end speed pedal like that one has the sun tour drive system a hub motor I've, dr I've ridden them both and that one actually is more powerful you can go up the hill a little bit faster but you do hear the motor it's more pronounced you don't have to worry about mashing although Bosch does have shift sensing so with, with this pack, they estimate like, oh, 130 miles. Again, if you're climbing hills and you're using, you know, the, the full level like turbo mode, you're not going to get that kind of range, but you will get more and you're going to be able to empower the motor, which is the mid drive there by changing gears. Now this one doesn't have quite as many gears as some of the other ones. It's a, a 10 sprocket cassette back here. Um, Shimano Dior components, like pretty good stuff. But uh, 11 to 36 is, is kind of the, the rating there. And then we have a smaller 15 tooth chain ring. So you don't get quite the range at those higher speeds. Like again, coming back to that daily grinder, I think it had a 22 tooth front sprocket. So definitely geared for like actually going faster. The bars are a lot narrower. Like this is really why this is almost like a mountain bike bar. And I've got the, all the, the measurements back at the website. I couldn't memorize like quite all of them but it's really interesting to me to kind of compare those. Also coming back to the E45, the Outlaw, its frame really cuts down low. The standover height is like 28 inches versus like 36 or something on this, or maybe it's 32. So for someone who's a little bit shorter, that's nice. Several sizes available in, in a lot of the Bulls bikes. So I like that. That's part of what you're paying for. That and a two year kind of a drivetrain electronic warranty plus five years on the frame is really nice. The other thing that I like about this frame is that in addition to that, that rear pannier rack, which kind of bows out, if you look at it from above, you can see that the, the blockers bow out because they're uh, trying to make room for those huge 203 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes. But they also give you uh, some threaded eyelets up here on the seat stays. So you could potentially add a different rack or some other sort of support device. I, I really love that. Um, you've also got bottle cage bosses, and a more traditional looking frame that could potentially hang on the back of your car. You can take off that 5.7 pound battery pack, lighten, lighten the weight of this bike. This bike isn't super light. These big aluminum fenders are awesome. You know, they, they kind of remind me of some of the Stromer bikes or other just, you know, solid, they blend in, they're more durable, but they add some weight. So the weight of this bike's about 55 pounds and I'm on the uh, 51 size right now. So just kind of keep that in mind in terms of how you want to use this. Maybe you give up your car and you don't you don't need to worry about those things, but sometimes buses, you're still kind of hanging it on the back. I like that they, they've got these like Velo 
semi-ergonomic grips. They remind me of some of the ones from Specialized I've seen, but they don't have lockers on them, so they might twist a little bit. Bit of a trade-off. Um, you know, FSA headset, sticks, stem here. Also a sticks hub in the rear. So just some different parts. Love that there's a kickstand and it's plenty of clearance so you can pedal it backwards or, you know, it's, it's really not going to collide if you're moving this bike around. It stays out of the way. That's just wonderful. And then the brake levers here, these are extra long and they've got like kind of a ball at the end of them. And that keeps you from potentially sliding off. That's like a European requirement. So when you're braking, uh, it's, it's just safer safer you're going faster you want uh you want those kinds of things although i didn't notice the license plate holder and again i think that's because this is an america specific variation of the 650 e2 very cool stuff oh and then of course comfort's an issue when you're going at high speed got the kenda sticks again ace of pace wheels and, and tires uh here 30 to 50 psi so lower psi and that that's going to add some comfort but you lose some efficiency too and then 650 by 57B, so that's 27.5 by 2.25. So 2.25 is pretty wide. And then this kind of checkerboard, almost like a BMX pattern on the tread, it's pretty comfortable. This bike is, is more comfortable to ride. We've got a Suntour suspension fork, a little bit more basic. It does have lockout right here and preload adjust, but it's a spring shock instead of an air shock on some of the other models. So that's, again, that's a trade-off. You could potentially replace it inch and an eighth tapered headset here so sturdy but also i think that the the they're they're using uh, 11 millimeter quick release skewers not through axles so it's not quite as stiff but again i like the big brakes at least you know so there's so really interesting combination of parts here and in that like four thousand dollar range i think this is kind of the best looking bike that i've seen that's a speed pedal pedelec and stuff it's it's one of the one of the leaders at least in my mind at this point they're always changing new stuff's coming 30.9 millimeters, I believe, double check the website, but I think that's the seat post diameter and you could potentially put a Thudbuster, a body float, or even Suntour has their NXC, I think it is, suspension. It's just gonna change the characteristics and make it feel more like a full suspension bike without actually having a full suspension. You don't have to pay as much. That's kind of cool if you're someone like me who gets a stiff neck and back. So let's talk a little bit more about the electronics. We've got the power pack here easy to remove, charge it inside, lighten up the bike. Once it's on, you only need to press one button here to power on the display. And the display is removable. That's another awesome thing about the Bosch electric bike system. It's got a micro USB charging port over here on the side. So you can charge your phone if you're using it as a GPS or something. And then you've got all these great readouts, primarily battery, five little bars up there. It's kind of a uh, kind of nice 20% increments then we've got speed it's currently in mile per hour you can adjust that and then a bunch of other readouts below that so if you press the i button here or here it changes so we got trip distance clock max speed average speed trip time range range is so cool because depending on what level of assist you're in it actually dynamically calculates how far it thinks you can go with the remaining battery capacity so i'm going to go ahead and arrow up to eco mode that's the lowest and it says 64 miles Keep in mind, we're using the older PowerPack 400. It's gonna come with a 500 watt hour, or roughly 500, it's like 482.4 or something. Then we arrow up to Tour, Sport, and Turbo. It drops significantly down to like 24, 25 miles. You know, that's a great indication, and part of the reason it's it's a little bit lower right now is because these, these are steeper hills, and I've been cruising all around here and testing the bike out. So it, it kind of calculates based on the last five miles, I believe. And gives you some feedback it's backlit if you press this light button and that's also what activates your headlight and your tail light like i was saying before and even though it's sort of small i just like that it's there you can see that lighting up and if you had bags or something it's not going to get blocked a lot of times if you have a light here if you're wearing a jacket it can kind of slough over and block that so it's just it's wonderful to have that right there i um, also wanted to call out this nice chain guard chain ring guard it kind of keeps your pants from rubbing on the chain getting messed up and getting snagged okay so coming back up to the display we've kind of gone through the main points and it might be a good time to just hop on this thing and ride but i, I would just want to call out how easy it is to adjust the bike while you're riding it this isn't the kind of thing where you have to take your hands off it's just really intuitive and it uh it works pretty well
Okay, so as I pedal, the drive system is going to be sensing with a little sensor right there on the chainstay, along with my pedal cadence and pedal torque, when to activate. And I found that it's one of the most responsive systems out there. The higher RPM, meaning the faster you're spinning, the more noise you get. It's like, but it's not super noisy. You know, this is this is a more active drive system. You definitely feel it more. It's not like super quiet and kind of like unnoticeable. You can still hear other systems like Bros. I think Impulse is one of the quietest, but it's also just kind of minimal. You sort of miss it sometimes. So I'm going to hop on this thing and give it a go. We're looking up a pretty big hill right now, so I'm going to leave it in turbo mode. Pretty good climbing power. I mean, I'm up at like 10 miles per hour with one hand in a pretty high gear, pedaling slowly, and we're making it up this hill, no problem. That's what I like, you know. And even from a speed pedal, like even though this is only 60 newton meters of torque, it still feels good. Now, notice that chain ring. It's it's actually spinning 2x for every crank arm rotation, so they do gear it a little bit higher, um, but it works out pretty well. And chain's nice and tight. Years, you know, I'm pushing down, purposely climbing. Um, there, you know, that's the thing about a mid drive. There's a little bit more force being applied to the chain and those chain rings in the back. But, you know, at the same time, this system has an intelligent sort of software-driven shift sensing, and you do hear and notice the motor cuts out a little bit, tries to ease off to reduce the wear on those parts. It's still there, but it's better than than nothing. And these are the other two speed pedal -like models I was mentioning before, the Daily Grinder and the Outlaw E45. And you'll notice that it also doesn't have the rack or fenders. That's kind of an upgrade, but it's got that lower standover height we were talking about. Just some interesting options from the company. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed. I appreciate that diversity. And I wanted to mention just that these racks, and sometimes you want to put a trunk bag, but by not having that platform, this is really clear, so swinging your leg over becomes less of a potential hazard. And that's something that I guess I clip my shins pretty frequently when I'm riding on bikes. I usually don't step this way, I swing my leg over. So keep that in mind. It's another, just as far as like utility goes. Well, I've had a ton of fun riding on this bike. It performs a lot like the other Bosch powered bikes. It just goes a little bit faster. You don't have to try to get like a speed dongle or change anything on the bike to get that performance and the comfort for me, the ergonomic grips, the bigger tires, and just that suspension, you know, it really, it really, it really adds to the usability of this bike. And then the fact that it's just, it's within reach, like, yeah, this isn't super cheap, but 
it's gonna get you further it's gonna last a long time great warranty and it just looks cool like i think that's my my big takeaway is like i like the way this one looks more than a lot of the other ones and i i don't mind i can get over the high step frame that's the other big consideration so hopefully that gives you some perspective you can check out the full details on this back at the written review at electricbikereview.com leave some comments check out some pictures or whatever maybe in the forums um have fun out there it's a speed pedelec so <laughs> ride safe and uh we'll see you next time